having been born in South Africa, I was really born into a context of race and racism. I think one of my earlier memories, I, I forget what age I was, but perhaps four, four or five, um, we were living in Cape Town, South Africa at the time. And typically on the weekends, my parents would take us to Sea Point, which was an area in Cape Town where you could walk along the coast. At that time, though, the area that we would often visit was designated for whites. So it was a whites only area. And I remember clearly there was a walkway or a promenade. On the other side was a mini golf um, set up and also a train on which young kids could ride. And I think I've got very vivid memories of standing on the side of the fence watching all these kids having a wonderful time <laughs> and wondering why I couldn't participate. When I was a little older, possibly nine or 10 years old, my mom took myself, my older brother and my younger sister to just a local beach. Shortly after getting to the beach, a police officer um, arrived and told us that we had to vacate the beach area um, because that beach area was designated for whites only. Um, even though, you know, it wasn't clearly marked. I will never forget the look on my mother's face, um, which I think was a mixture of anger, shame, powerlessness, feeling like she had nothing she could do. Many years later, um, when I now had a family of my own, um, living in Fairfax, Northern Virginia, I took a, a routine ride to the supermarket um, with my two sons, and my father, who was visiting at the time from Australia, was pulled over by um, a Virginia state trooper. I had been in the U.S. then long enough to know that, you know, it's, it's not a comfortable experience being pulled over by a, a state trooper, especially in the context of race. So I was uh, made sure to be very courteous, very careful, but also was wanting to know why we had been pulled over. Um, the state trooper refused to give that information, asked me for my license, etc. And then came back a few minutes after running the license to tell me that the reason I had been pulled over was that one of my kids' seatbelt was not um, attached or not on, which was a complete falsehood. But more than that, he then proceeded to berate me in front of my kids, telling me that I was not taking care of my children, I was putting them in danger, etc. And I remember feeling, I think, a similar way to how my mother felt many years ago, which was completely helpless, feeling very angry and feeling ashamed that I was being treated this way in front of my children. These are experiences that really capture not only how individuals, but how generations are impacted by racism and my belief is that it really is a type of trauma when you think of the emotions that I experienced which were very similar to the emotions that I saw in my mother you know when I was much younger as a child you know I, I do think the, the the primary way I cope is through the work that I do it allows me to bring meaning to my experiences of racism so my experiences can inform my research. And through my research, I think it allows me to give voice to the experiences of a larger group of people. So in some sense, I'm taking the experiences, turning them on, on its head, as it were, and, and using it as a way to fuel um, the work that I do. I do a lot of reading. You know, the, the people who, whose, whose life stories really impact me are people that I view as champions in the resistance of racism. Um, and so I think I also, that's a way of coping, to remind myself that even though this feels um, overwhelming at times, we can resist in some way. For people of color, for people who are targeted by racism, I would say that we need to remain active. We need to continue to educate we need to advocate on our behalf, on the behalf of others, because at a very minimum, it leaves us feeling less powerless. So, so we have to engage, um, irrespective of what the outcome is around our activism. I think just being involved, being active, pushing back, resisting in ways we can, that is in and of itself something that can lead to psychological health and well-being. So again, I think it's less about the outcome, but it's more about consistent engagement 
And I think there's there's real benefit in in engaging. And because I found it helpful, I would offer it as a, a, a way of coping and responding to others as well.